Hi, on behalf of Beat Latino and Gozamos and Catalina Maria Johnson, I'm talking with a Tijuana-born songstress, Ceci Bastida, now based in Los Angeles. Hi, Ceci, how are you doing? Hi, Catalina. Good, how are you? Great to see you and hope to see you in Chicago again in the near future. It's been a couple of years, right, since we last it's- Yeah, it's been a couple of years. I can't wait to go back, though. Well, um, I wanted to talk to you about your upcoming album, La Edad de la Violencia. It's fascinating. Um, Very, very much an album of contrasts, um, dark and light. (laughs) The lightness of the music and some of the darkness of some of the themes. So tell us a little bit more about how La Edad de la Violencia came together. Um, well, I started working on the songs, or most of the songs, around 2011, and um, and, and at that time I was uh, I was pregnant, and um, you know I, I tend to talk about social issues. That's kind of where I tend to go when I'm writing a song. And um, at that moment, I just I think I just felt more sensitive to everything that was happening around me, and uh, so just it kind of came came out naturally where I was just writing about things that I was either living, watching, reading about, um, etc. Mainly things that happen in Mexico and in the U.S., but also around the world. So uh, once I finished most of the songs, I realized that they all sort of touched uh, the theme of violence in one way or another. So there was, you know, violence in my country, in Mexico, which has been out of control for, for a few years now. And uh, but, I, but I also, you know, about to have a child, um, you know, realizing that all, all, all these shootings that keep happening in different schools in the U.S., that it's very much uh, a U.S. kind of problem, even though it happens in other countries, it's, it's mainly, uh, or it's, it really happens in the U.S. more than anywhere else. So um, I started thinking about that stuff, too. So I, I talk a lot, I mean, I talk about um, violence in schools, uh, violence against women. Um, so it just kind of went in that direction, naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and your baby's a daughter, right? If I remember yes. correctly. Yes. And yes. So she's, what, a, <laughs> how old is she now? A couple of years old? Yes. Oh. She's she's two in a few months, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. <laughs> and uh, on a personal note, you have a very uh, illustrious husband, too, <laughs> Josh uh, Kuhn, who does a lot of work uh, in music and in, um, like, Music theory, but very, very applied in terms of the real world. Very wonderful, professorial yeah. kind of person. Um, so, uh, so I know that in your uh, previous work, like the uh, song with Rai Rai, you all you you touched mm-hmm. on the topic. Um, yeah. And do you think there's been has there been a change in your perspective? Um, I know that uh, that particular song was kind of. Uh, was a, was also kind of a, a song of contrast, but a little bit almost grimmer. It seemed to have a little less hope than some of the songs in this album do. Or um, is that yeah. my impression? No, I think I think it was just trying to have a conversation about it. Um, but uh, I don't. I think things have changed, but not necessarily in a good way, or not necessarily that much. I think uh, you know the cartels are still present. There's still uh, a drug war happening in Mexico. But then there's also different movements that are happening now that I'm sure you're aware of, uh, where people are trying to defend their land, and you know. It, so, uh, it, it, in in the song that Have You Heard and the one with Rai Rai, I mainly talk about uh, drugs and you know and cartels that are selling drugs. But w- what I talk about now, when I talk about violence in, in Mexico, it has to do a lot with drugs, but also has to do with kidnappings, with how. Uh, dangerous Mexico can be for journalists, for migrants uh, from Central America. So it just—it's kind of like a different, a different thing. It's it's violence and how people are living. A lot of people are living in fear. How a lot of people are uh, forced to pay uh, a certain amount of money each month from their businesses to different types of cartels, whether they're drugs or, or kidnapping. Uh, what do you call it? Um, como grupos criminales. Sí, right, right. Um, Militares, yeah. I mean, no? como grupos criminales, more like crime, you know. So, uh, so yes, it's, it talks about a broad, broader problem, Spectrum. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. But, um, but yes, it, it definitely touches on the violence in Mexico thing mm-hmm. for sure. Do you think that I know that art in um, in Latin America has always been very political, um, but here in the U.S., you know, there, there's been a, sometimes a greater division between art 
and music and uh, other topics, more serious topics, uh, even films even, you know, so it's sort of like people don't like to be reminded. <laughs> it's like they want to go to art to escape. So do you see music as a way to kind of keep present some of the things that we need to keep present and not escape from? And do you see it also as a way to o overcome the kind of the, um, the despair in a way? I mean, I don't, uh, it, you know, how, how do you, what do you see music possibly uh, being the instrument too, and at least the way you put put it together? I think it's more about starting a conversation. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to tell people that my way of looking at things is the right way, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely good to have conversation about these things. Um, and I think that art in general, you know, people, people use art to express different kinds of things, whether it's love, whether it's, you know, uh, social issues, it doesn't matter. I think, I think it's what you choose to do. And, um, and for whatever reason, I, I tend to want to talk about these things because when I walk through the world, I, I don't, you know, I don't walk like this. And, um, and I look around, you know, I, I tend to look everywhere and, and it's hard to not be affected by, by what you see and what you live, whether it's directly or indirectly. And that's the way that I do my art is expressing what all of these things make me feel. So I end up talking about social issues a lot of the times. Um, and, uh, and a lot of people don't. I think, I think it's, it's fair to do whatever you want. That's what I think. It's fair to do whatever you want. And, and I don't want to impose anything on anybody. It's just, this is my way of viewing things. This is my perspective on things. And I like meeting people and having conversations about these things too. And if it, and you know, and if it all of a sudden a kid who has never thought about, you know, violence in Mexico or drugs or corruption or whatever, listens to something and thinks, hey, wait, what's going on? I'd like to know a little bit more about this. Then that's amazing too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting to me that on, on some levels, it, it seemed like this was a uh, musically, um, you know, hearkening back a little bit more to some punkier roots uh, that I know that you have from Tijuana from mm -hmm. way back and uh, yeah. rocker and also, but also kind of nocturnal. It was very dance. Some of the tunes are very dance clubby. I mean, very like yeah. Uh, yeah. middle of the <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> madrugada kind of tunes you know uh right right before the uh um you know the early morning pozole or early morning um <laughs> uh, soup se me está olvidando ahorita el de tripa eh, pero, Ay, <laughs> yeah, pero, <laughs> pero para la cruda no it's like that or like like exactly. late night sound so i thought that was interesting too yeah I mean, especially because, you know, some of it was, uh, and I read about, you know, your, your, your daughter and kind of uh, the preoccupation with having a child and in the sense of being more concerned about certain kinds of events. But then it was like, well, but this is like the two o'clock in the morning. This is not the mom kind of music. Let me put it that way. Because at the end of the day, I do like, you know, I like to dance. I like people to dance. I like people to have a good time. Uh, but it, it's also, I think it's part of, I, I, I want to think that the, the record is balanced or the songs are balanced in a way that maybe the lyrics are a little bit, um, not dark, but, you know, talk about serious issues. Uh, but then the, the music is sort of like the hope, I want to say. You know, that this is not by any means a, a record that's pessimistic. I don't want it to feel that way because that's not my intention. Uh, because, you know, as much as I, I, I look around me and see all of these crazy, awful things happening. I also meet, I'm constantly meeting people that are doing incredible work to try to make this a better world in a way. And I am uh, amazed and I admire them. So I, 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 it's, it's not a pessimistic album. It's, it's a, uh, album of hope, I think in a way. And I think the music sort of como que contrarresta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Counterbalances. Uh, mm. yeah. What, what the lyrics are saying and you know it's still about hope it's still about you know believing that human beings are good mm -hmm, <laughs> and mm -hmm. i'm not saying that the world is awful and people mm -hmm. are awful because it's not that's not the case right. um so i wanted it to have a balance and at the same time i do want people to have a good time you know i don't I, i'm not here to preach or to be like this is what it is you need to sit down and just right. listen and that's not that's not what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to yes create a conversation, but also have a good time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, just a couple more um, uh, questions about the songs. I read that some of them were inspired in oh, Haruki Muramaki's uh, 
uh, work? Murakami, yes. Murak Murakami, yeah. so I was Murakami, whose work I don't, you know, I know of but haven't read. So, and, uh, but uh, I thought that was interesting. So tell me a little bit more about that. Well, what happened with that is that, you know, I do, I do like read. And, um, and at that time, when I wrote those songs, I, I you know, I, I had read, th those songs are actually a little bit older than, than the rest of the record. Mm. Um, I had like Nakata, Nakata would be one, I assume, from the time. Nakata would be one, and yes, uh, Cuervo is another one, and Cuando Te Tenga is the other one. So it's three. Mm -hmm. and, it, and basically, it's three points of view from, you know, three different characters. And uh, what I wanted to do is, I, I love that writer. I love him. I think he does incredible work. And um, and that's one of the, when I wanted to write, and I was thinking of trying to do something with a book that I loved. And that was one of the books that I loved. And I think that I, I was drawn to that book also because, you know, Haruki Murakami's writing is very complex. It's very, uh, sometimes it can be a little hard to understand, but, but the stories are incredible. And there, there's a lot of feeling of uh, loneliness and uh, sadness and um trying to find something, trying to find someone, trying to connect with the world in a way. And so it, it sort of uh, resonated with me a little bit. I, I, I felt very much attached to the book, and I wanted to write songs, you know, based on it. I, I had only done that once with a song on my first album where I wrote a song based on a book that I really loved. And, and I thought it was also great for me as a, as a writer to try to do it from a different voice, you know, just try to become these characters in a way and try to express uh, what they're experiencing, living or feeling. Um, so it was great for me. It was a great exercise for me as a, as a you know, as a songwriter. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like the story sort of connected with the rest of the album because it does talk about, like I said, you know, there's there's a murder, there's kidnapping, but um, but people somehow you know continue to go on, and um, so and, and the whole album I wanted to feel that way, like yes, there's all these things happening, but people are still uh, moving on and you know trying to make a, a better life for themselves, their family. So it, it it kind of fit in pretty well, I thought. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, one last question now, uh, Tijuana. Is there still what do you still feel that you know you the Tijuana? part of you, you know, the, your foundation comes through uh, musically and in your writing? Um, is that, I mean, are there elements that you still recognize? Oh, yeah, that, that's from, you know, that's from Tijuana. I'm curious. I think so. I think so. I mean, uh, my family's still there. I go there often. My friends are there. Um, and, you know, I, I started thinking about immigration and um, people trying to leave my country to come to this one. Uh, when I lived there, you know, that's, it, it kind of, it, it's part of who I am because I saw people crossing the border every single day of my life, pretty much trying to understand why people were living, leaving the country. And now being here, I sort of see the other side. Once the people are here, hear what their lives are like, um, what, uh, obstacles they encounter. Um, so yes, there's definitely a lot of Tijuana still, you know, and, I, and I, when I talk about violence in Mexico, I do talk about. Uh, violence in Tijuana because even though it's a little bit better, it's doing a little bit better now. Uh, there was a period where you know it was hard, and 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 uh, I was affected almost directly uh, from it. And um, so it's it's hard to be away. It's it's part of who I am. My family's there, like I said. It's you know it's not gonna that's not gonna change. Well, um, it's been a pleasure talking to you and finding out more about Edad de la Violencia. And uh, which is interesting because it reminds me of, um, you know, I think the, the Colombians talked about their periods in their history, la, la primera violencia, la segunda violencia. So, um, and yet um, recommend highly that people check it out uh, because it is amazing music too. And, and a lot of fun. <laughs> it's <laughs> odd to say that, but it's a it's lot okay. of fun. Um, there's one People song that, uh, Por la Calle, that's almost like, you know, you're bouncing. And then, I, you know, you, you hear the words, you go like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I look forward to uh, having you here in Chicago, hopefully in the very near future. And in the meantime, uh, coming up, that's coming out in May, right? Uh, yeah, one's coming out in June. In June, yeah, I'm June. sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're already in May. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Wonderful, Ceci. Thank you for your time. And, Thank uh, you, Katarina. Hasta la próxima, entonces. Okay, hasta luego. Chao.